All right, everyone, welcome to our A to J Author new user webinar. This is Jessica Frank, A to J Authors Project Manager, and I have a special host for today's webinar. Tobias Enterejo is our back end developer. And Tobias is going to be talking about the A to J Author Suite. So, how to set up the A to J Viewer and the A to J DAT for self hosting. Um, and he will uh, take it away. So, Tobias, feel free to take it away. Hello. Uh, hello and welcome. Welcome, welcome. That's the AJ Sweet Build Break. It's how to set up the viewer and DAT for self hosting. I'm Tobias Torejo, as Jessica has said, I'm the backend developer for AJ Author here at Cali. The topics covered today is the basic overview of the AJ Suite, some hosting options for AJ guided interviews, how to set up AJ Viewer on your own Windows server. Uh, well, it's really for any server, but today we'll be using Windows. Uh, how to set up the AJ DAT on your own server. Uh, so the build breaks basically just a, a live demo. The demo guys tend to be cruel, um, but that's fine because uh, the what I what I expect is things might break, but they'll be pretty common breaks, and you know so it'll be fine. We'll be handle it. We can do it live. Um, so brief overview of how AJ set up has has four broadly four components. Has AJ author, which most of you are probably be familiar with, the viewer, which uh, which, which you will produce guides to run in, and uh, self-regulated self -regulated litigants will be using to run their guides. It's web-based and mobile-friendly. Uh, the AJ document assembly tool should be using if you are uh, developing documents, and the viewer generates analytics. What we're going to be talking about in this presentation is the viewer, uh, the DAT, a little bit about security and hosting. So let's try to visualize how everything kind of connects together, how all these components connect together. Uh, so, like I said, you start with the AJ author. Uh, you go to AJ author, you, you'll generate a guide, and you'll send that to some server, which is this big old cloud thingy. Um, the server uh, interacts with the uh, SRLs, where they'll try to get documents and answers, and they'll try to get, and they'll, they'll, the SRL will interact with the AJ viewer, which generates answers, and will send those answers to the DAT to generate documents. And all this can be mediated with some custom code, which will handle encryption and decryption of the answers, or even navigating between if the SRL wants to, to, to store answers or get answers or to, to just generate a document. Uh, the viewer also generates analytics, which is hosted at, on our, at, here at Cali on our own custom Matomo server, uh, which is a lot like Google Analytics, but it's, it has a lot more uh, privacy features. So what's needed to run your guide interviews? Well, you need the AJ viewer, uh, the document assembly tool if you're going to produce documents and and obviously a guided interview. So you have a lot of options to get this all set up. You have Wahub Interactive. Uh, you can uh, self-host or you can use Cali's AJ.org. LHI is a service that's available free to, uh, for free to US-based nonprofits, legal aids, and attorneys. Um, users can save answers and manage accounts there. And you can host interviews and generate documents with the AJ DAT and Hot Docs. Uh, uh, Cali has its own service called AJ at Org. It's available for free to all legal aid, uh, nonprofit staff, Cali members, and public libraries. And much like LHI, you can manage accounts and save answer files. And these answer files are, of course, encrypted. Encrypted files, uh, encrypted uh, in transit like through HTTPS, and encrypted on the disk, on, on, on an actual encrypted disk. Uh, AJ at org, if you actually go to the website, uh, you'll get a, a list of everything. This isn't exactly uh, how how SRLs would interact with it. They would, you, you normally give them like a custom link and they would interact with that. But if you went to there, you would see a list uh, uh, organized by location. On, and then the next features of the AJ at org, they can assemble documents with that, uh, play around with that. Um, and you can publish and manage guides directly from AJ Author. Uh, what that looks like is uh, if you go to if you go to AJ Author, 
Delorg, you log in, you open up an interview, if you publish, you publish a Delorg, and you'll get like a, an interactive, uh, an inter uh, you'll, you'll get a dashboard that where you can, uh, you have a link where you can test, uh, and you can modify features of the interview and even delete it. Yeah, so if you had more interviews, it would look a lot like this. You can also self-host. Um, this is the most flexible. Uh, you get the total control of user data. You can stay your process answers any way you want. Uh, and it's good for things like hosting intake systems. Um, that's probably the most common use case right now. Uh, setting up of the, of the viewer and data is actually not too bad if you can set up and maintain the server. The viewer, if you want to have the process answer files, the answer files just uh, are output in plain XML and JSON. So it's not too complicated. Um, and the technical requirements are just, it's limited basically by the, the viewer and the data. Well, the viewer is basically just HTML, JavaScript, and some images and uh, some style sheets. Uh, so basically any modern web server like Apache 2.4 plus or IIS uh, will handle the viewer. Oh, PHP 7.4 plus is, is required uh, for the our physical example code, 8.1 after actually November 26. Actually, I believe that's a typo. Um, the end of since PHP 7.4 goes end of life. P7.4 goes end of life pretty soon um, in November. Uh, but any modern backend language, you, for you're not specific to PHP, you can use basically just any modern language really will will support you, will work with you uh, for processing the answer files. And answer files, again, are just XML and JSON. The DAT is a little bit more, uh, it has a little bit more heavy requirements uh, since it's it requires Node 16 uh, plus right now, which is the current long-term support version of Node. Now self-hosting, is the most difficult. Uh, you need to, you know, install secure and troubleshoot and maintain a server. Uh, saving and processing the answer files requires some programming knowledge and also some knowledge of security since you are handling PII or you might be handling PII. So this is likely to be the most cost in terms of, you know, staff time and money. If you want to, like infrastructure wise, you have a good deal of options because the, te the tech requirements are so, you know, pretty lenient. Um, so if you want to go on the cloud, you use AWS or Microsoft Azure. Uh, you can use a virtual private server or you can use like an in house server. Um, so uh, let's give a little overview of the environment they'll be using to build our stuff. Uh, this server is Windows Server 2016 on Azure. Um, the Kali infrastructure actually uses Linux, but uh, you know, showing stuff on Windows is a little more interesting. More, more, it's more clear. So, just putting everything on Windows right now. Um, uh, the, the machine specs are as a dual core eight gig uh, VM. Uh, the actual uh, model of this VM is uh, the standard D2S. Uh, version three, uh, it's already capable of hosting. Since all that's kind of, it takes uh, that like setting all that up live would take a little too long. Uh, so I've also installed like the basic, um, the basic dependencies like Git and Firefox, Notepad plus plus, PHP, a bunch of the reg regular modules, Python. You know, all that stuff is already set up because you don't need to be watching me point and click uh, stuff. You know, installing basic stuff. Um, so this is, should be all set up to, to install just the viewer and the DAT. Microsoft quotes this as like as costing about $154 a month max usage. Um, uh, but this is not like uh, this is this is this was chosen for um, for for the the experience of the, of the demo. It's not necessarily like minimal requirements. Uh, like you know, a nice beefy eight gigabyte VM will compile stuff pretty quickly. You know, you're not going to get any of that slowdown. It's not necessarily like minimal requirements. So you can probably go cheaper depending on, on the profile of your of your of your use case. If you want to follow along, you can go to uh, https uh, buildbreak.hjauthor.org. That's the base URL for this actual box. So the first thing we're going to install is the viewer. 
this is a basic summary of how to how to install the viewer. Uh, you basically would download it to your web root, you then extract it and then configure the, the viewer to use whatever custom codes you've developed. Um, you would then unzip your guides into the guides folder. You publish a link to, on your website and then uh, and you'd also run guides to test. Uh, so the, the viewer, the home of the viewer is basically in a GitHub repo. If you go to github.com slash uh, ckali slash aj viewer, that's like the, the, the base repo, the base folder for the repo. Uh, that goes to the, the default to the, to the develop branch, uh, which is kind of, you know, a little experimental. What you really want is the production branch. If you want to follow the latest releases, you can actually subscribe to Atom Link, which is the cool feature of GitHub. Uh, you'll get a, you'll show up in a feed a little bit like, you know, kind of like Twitter. It'll show up in a, in a, in a feed for whenever we have releases. Um, so uh, when you when we put commits for source code, it'll go in production. When we do a release, it'll be in releases. We tend to do those at, at the same time uh, or pretty close. The uh, production readme for all the instructions uh, for setting it up and for all the customization, it, the, it's pretty much all on the readme.md uh, file in this repo. So there are at least two different ways to install the viewer. Uh, you can use uh, git and rebuild from source, or you can download it. Now, most people should just download from the releases and install. It's, easy it's pretty easy um yeah. uh, like i said you just extract the web root change permissions and uh you can use like a demo page um to test your setup where which it's just a demo page uh, it's, it's not really intended to be used in production oh uh, in installing from git that's more for advanced users where you would clone the repo you run build the build view npm run build viewer zip and then you'd extract that zip and that zip should be pretty much identical so let's actually try to install the viewer from source so this is our actual build environment uh this is the repo so going to go to releases Uh, this is the built version, so we'll just download that. Open it up. Copy, go to our web root. Paste. Extract it. This actually goes uh, one directory higher than I want it. So I'll just put it up here. Um, and I'll delete this, the extra garbage. Okay, then we can test it by going to uh, the demo page. The demo page is in AJ viewer slash viewer uh, index.php. So So if we go there, uh, oops, viewer, slash viewer, uh, you'll see a list of the guides, and those guides are should be the same as here, uh, right in the guides folder, right it's a, in the top of a directory. So this it's this demo page uh, demos a uh, a. Uh, uh, demos like the how to generate a custom link to run your guides um, if you click it you should be able to, to run the viewer you should be familiar with this this is the viewer um, you should be able to run through the entire thing uh, color and it should work um, now the example code i'm talking about Looks like this. So uh, for processing answers, we have example code there. This just outputs what the what the actual answer file is. 
that example code is here, answers.php. Um, so if you were to, and we can also try to build from Git. So I like to use uh, Git bash. So what we do is well, I've already navigated to the web root, CIDAP hub root. So clone the repo. Com slash c cali slash two k zero and I'll go into it. Tobias, can you make that a little bigger, please? Oh yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, I don't think I can actually make the. Uh, here we are. Next, uh, oh, 16. Thanks. Okay. Ah, uh, a second. Go to there. Okay. Um, here. So this is the source, or this is the entire repo. Uh, we don't want to be in the develop branch, so we'll check out production. Then the command is to run the build first. Oops. So it, we have a feature called Volta. Uh, Volta has installed this. Uh, it's a JavaScript manager. Uh, it's installing Node. Uh, the Node tool is automatically from the package.json. And I actually mistyped the command. So NGM run deploy. Okay, so that will build in the background. It's going to take a little bit, so I could take a little time to show you about, uh, about the custom code. Uh, so just trust me, this is just building in the background. Um, if you have custom processing code, like I said, if you open, there's a bunch of different ways to to navigate that. If you have only like one interview, you can edit the viewer.html and you can edit the parameters, like set data URL. You can change this to whatever other file you want or endpoint, or you could change the the endpoint, that same endpoint is a query parameter here. Like, uh, you would just add set data URL as a as another query parameter. So you would like with the right URL, or you could the laziest ways you could just edit answers.php um, to change your your custom code. Um, 
oh boy. It always takes longer when you're doing it live, but let's see. So still building, trying for the last parts of the build tasks. Hey, Tobias, let me jump in. Hmm? Yeah. This is John Mayer. So if if, uh, if if you've never done any server backend management, this, this looks like just like black magic. I mean, completely uh, opaque. Um, and, and so the expectation is that you you know something about running a server, running a web server, knowing sort of like how the how, how a web engine talks to software, talks to directories, you know, putting things in the right place. Um, if you know anything about that, then then this is relatively straightforward. And if you have lots of experience, this is this is utterly trivial for 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 most backend or sysop or you know Unix devs or or any of that sort of thing. And usually in a in an organization where there's an IT people, where there's IT people with somebody running the, the servers, that's the person that that you have to um, uh, learn their language from. And, and and what we've tried to do is 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 make everything as easy as possible for that type of person. You know, they find GitHub, they find our docs, they can figure it out pretty fast. Um, but if you're starting from a standing stop of I've never done any of this sort of thing before. Um, there's a whole lot of presumed knowledge about, uh, you know, web-based servers and cloud-based, you know, uh, um, management that that might make this seem relatively opaque to you. But 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 I, but I guess I guess what 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 uh, Tobias is demoing is is how straightforward it is once you sort of have a have an awareness of the landscape. Right. Yeah. Thank you, John. Uh, yes, now I've built how uh, you can build the zero zip, and the zip is should be pretty much identical. Uh, the difference it will build a viewer, the it will build the, the zip, um, in the parent directory. Uh, come on now. I will also say that the most common problem for, for even for experienced um, sysops is that it is the file is in the wrong directory or the, uh, the parameter is pointing to the wrong file or pointing to the wrong directory or you didn't, you know, just, that, that is the, by far the, the single most common thing that people uh, run up against early on. And, you know, once, once everything's running, um, it's obvious, you know, that it's all working. And, and then one day you can't, you know, it says like, you know, uh, 404 or, you know, file that file, or it doesn't even tell you file that file. It just gives you a blank page. You know, the best thing is to go through and check and make sure all the places that point to a file are actually finding that file in the file folder on your server. I guess I should have kept talking. I was trying to fill your uh, your, your dead air while while uh, on the screen while the system builds. All right. Well, actually, Bill, we actually had our first error since we had the the original uh, AJ viewer folder. It actually aired on it since uh, uh, since it already existed. So I just rebuilt it. Um, but now, like I said, it's in the parent directory of the repo. Uh, and it has a it has today's date because that's the way our our build scripts work. So we can should be extract it. And we'll put it in the same place. Uh, it should be identical. Yeah, it has the default guide. Has just has a different date. Um, and if we do a hard refresh, uh, Control Shift R. Yeah, it runs again. Um, 
So yeah, it's, it still runs. Um, so stop there, stop there. So notice, notice he's got, nope, go back to the folder. Notice he's got two installations from the first one, which was just the extracting the zip and the second one, which was the whole GitHub build. But he re, but he named the folders A to J viewer and A to J dash viewer to distinguish between the two. Uh, uh, well, actually, that's, that's, well, not well, kind of. This, the A to J viewer is the repo. This is from the repo. A to J dash viewer is just, uh, I guess it's legacy from how, how everything was set up. Uh, it's, well, even uh, I'm getting confused then yeah. a little bit. But, the, but, but that's, the, that's the point. Be careful how you name your folders so that you don't go, oh, yeah, it just it's obvious it drops there. It's like, oh, right. well, nope, I named it something else. Yep. Okay. So. All right. I already showed you the custom code. So now, uh, well, let's get to the place where you generate a document. Um, so if you're say so the dat requires so if you're generating documents you're using a uh, document preview uh, you need the dat we don't have the dat right now so you'll get uh, four or four um, which is fine um, and if you open the document preview since that doesn't work right now you'd get this error um, but that's fine because the next part is to to install the DAT. Uh, the basic overview of how to do that is uh, you just download the DAT to a non-web folder, install the node dependencies, install the DAT dependencies, configure the DAT, configure our process manager called PM2, uh, set up the web server to redirect some of those requests to node, so, uh, start the node service, then you know test. Um, what do you mean by a non-web folder? Uh, basically, we're just gonna in, in download it. We're gonna I'm gonna just download it to to, to WW root. But I'm not gonna I'm not going to to share the contents of that directory. To make those contents of, of the directory available for the web. And I'm I'm just gonna not gonna let the I IIS I users, which is the IIS user, have any access to it. Because um, I don't I don't want I don't it doesn't need to like the web that doesn't need need to be web accessible. Um, that's all I mean. By that. Um, so like the viewer, the AJ DAT has its own repo, it has its own Atom feed, and it has a readme, and it's over there. And let's try and build it. Oops. So, um, the DAT, you can't, you can't build it from a, there's no releases page, it's, that doesn't, just doesn't work. Uh, doesn't just didn't quite make sense for this. So you just clone the repo. Um, And said that our root is our our main default branch is develop, but we want production. And we deploy with our easy script. If you run deploy, um, actually, I'm sorry. This is we actually need a few things first, sorry. Uh, so by installing the debt dependencies, what we want is the latest vote. Uh, here we are. So we'll install the debt dependencies that includes now, this should be pinned, but this is to install Node as the global. Um, like the the you want to be able to install global dependencies and do, and also uh, 
to use the project dependencies. So we want to set everything to node 16.17, which is the current latest uh, version of node. We want to install the uh, the node the global project dependencies, which is here, which is basically pre-jip, node jip, CLI, steel tools, and PM2. Uh, th these are all basically tools to build the data and to manage the the process. I'm going to ask a hard question. What is Node? What is Node? Node uh, Node is a way to to run so JavaScript. Uh, was developed in like 1998 as kind of a tech demo to, to put a little bit of intelligence in web browsers. Um, and then it kind of just caught on as a, as a, as a tool that for the entire web, as a general language for the entire web. Uh, and then uh, I think about half a decade or maybe a decade ago, people started wanting to put, thought maybe that JavaScript will be pretty good to be used on the back end, not just as a front end, not just in browsers. So uh, Node is a way to run JavaScript like as a server level language. Like before that wasn't really, really popular or, um, but that's basically what Node is. It's, so it's the entire JavaScript ecosystem on the server. Neat. And NPM is a gigantic collection of libraries of JavaScript code that do various things. Yeah, it's that, and it, it's uh, the most important thing about it. It's it's not it's uh, the package manager. Uh, so so it's not just not just having not just having the like the collection of all the libraries. It's also how to navigate all those dependencies, and how to navigate um, even different versions of dependencies, and um, of different versions of dependency within the same project. Um, and even to be able to, to run like little scripts uh, for those products. So, yeah. Cool, so any any open source software, or actually maybe even any software is sitting on top of dozens, maybe hundreds of different programmers uh, work product. And there has to be some way to interconnect and coordinate that and npm is an attempt I'm, I'm i say attempt because sometimes it bites you <laughs> yeah um, it'll actually it's an attempt to, to put some <laughs> put some order to that chaos yeah all right so all that's built so we'll go all right uh where am i right Okay, so uh, now we can run our easy script, npm run deploy. And uh, while that's building, um, Let's look at configuration since this does take a little bit of time. So uh, the DAT has, you need two configuration files for the DAT. You know, the first for, for the actual, for the software that we wrote, uh, the actual AJ DAT had its own configuration file uh, called config.json. Uh, and that basically tells you that basically tells the DAT where to find the guides and templates. Um, and then there's for the process manager. Uh, the the process manager allow makes it so so that so that you can do more complicated things with the DAT, like like allocate and restrict memory usage, uh, uh, control how like restarts happen. Um, maybe create like a giant cluster of, of DAT processes uh, for redundancy. Or, um, 
and that is all held, all run by the node process manager. So that has its own configuration of file called ecosystem. That that and there, we have samples of this uh, in the folder samples.config. And we have samples for uh, basically Unix-like um, and Windows. Like so, config.json.windows is what we'll use for today, and ecosystem.config.js sample um, is pretty much universal. Uh, and those will go in the top level in the parent directory of the DAT, which right now is the web root. To properly configure this, um, you need to, it has to be the right name. So configure JSON, so meaning configure JSON uh, sample to configure JSON, config that, and ecosystem that configure JS to that sample to just the JS, and then you need to adapt it to your system. So. Uh, like a notepad plus plus. Let's see. So we're going to make sure that these directories match or match where we want them to go. So the viewer is in AJ viewer and the guides is in the, is in the subdirectory of the earth. So that should be correct. And the viewer path should be correct. And that path for WK HTML should be correct too. Um, Notice the difference in slashes too. So, yeah. so a directory is a backslash, at least on Windows. A URL though is a forward slash, and that's a that's a common bug or thing that you get wrong. I'm speaking from experience here. Yeah, it actually does bite you a lot, um, and you also have to escape them in the uh, for the Windows because JSON files won't accept a single slash as a so a single. Uh, backslash, so that's the escape. So like for the for the uh, uh, Unix like, you don't have that problem. Like you would, um, come on, yeah. Like everything is just forward slashes. So you don't have to escape anything. You just kind of go. See, Unix is or Linux is so much superior. Yeah. I'm, I'm standing on my high horse here. Uh, all right, so for ecosystem.config.js, uh, we want to make sure this matches our system. So let's see. So this is not quite the right directory. So I'll change this to slash a2j that. Um, uh, you can give it a name, you can have, if it has like the, a little, so we're going to run a cluster, um, has four instances. So we don't need this, it's just uh, as a demonstration, but, um, like in production, like a production for like AJ org, it has like a four instances, but for like a demo like this, like we're not going to have, you know, dozens of users at a time, but you can do it. Uh, we have plenty of memory. Um, if, for instance, we have a uh, max memory restart. So if, if uh, any instance goes over 168 megabytes, it would restart. Uh, for max, if, the, if there's too many restarts within a certain amount of time, like 10 restarts within, I think, I think the default is uh, 10 seconds, uh, then it will, the process will actually stop. Uh, we can configure the port. Right now it's 3000, which is a default node port. Um, and that's basically the most important stuff. Let me just save it. Um, okay. And now it is built. We navigate to the parent directory where ecosystem is. And we can uh, start that. So that's interesting. So, so the energy viewer is a, 
um, correct me if I'm wrong, it's essentially a program that runs when the user clicks to run a guided interview. But that is a service that is always running, waiting for something to hand it, hand something to it. Yeah, that's correct. Cool. Okay, so it started up. I uh, just want to make sure if it actually is still up. On Windows, it's, hard. it's usually obvious if there's a problem. Because like those, those, those terminal windows that popped up and disappeared, uh, if there's a problem, those terminal windows will keep popping up and disappearing. Your, your windows will slow down. On Linux, that won't, well, on a headless system, that won't happen. Um, so you should check to see if like, if your uptime goes up. <laughs> um, or, and you can also check the logs to see if it's actually going anywhere. Um, okay. And we can test the debt. Uh, so there's two ways we can test it. Since we have this, the API symbol endpoint actually open, we can actually send, resend the request. Uh oh, huh, looks like it's broken. Interesting. See if there's something it's still, oh, looks like it's still broken, huh? Try to generate a debt. Oh, well, ah, it's a problem. Well, we have the, uh, in the wrong file folder. <laughs> no, no, that's not, that's, no, that's not a problem. So why haven't we tried to build a view now? Well, uh, we need to set up what's called a, a reverse proxy. We need to actually, since it's on port 3000, all these requests, API assemble uh, is a request that's going to port 80, like every web server web request, but the DAT is operating on port 3000. And so we need to, to send those requests from port 80 to port 3000. And so we'll do this with a reverse proxy. Uh, the, this reverse proxy is just going to go internally to the local host, but it's still reverse proxy, just a little bit of configuration. So we're gonna go to, I, to the uh, IS net manager, and we're going to set up, actually, it's easiest to do it by doing it by hand. I should prefer it that way. Um, you can do it through INET Manager, but uh, do it by text. So. Uh, you can put the port on the URL as well, right? But that's. No, the, the, I, haven't, I haven't, for a security reason, I haven't exposed it, exposed that port. Um, to the rest of the world. Okay. So that's what that's, that's the other nice part of the reverse proxy. And if you do that, you you would have we'd have to have the you have to have a custom version of the viewer that sends that port because that port can also change. Like the port isn't always going to be three thousand. So you'd have to tell you'd have to have a way to have the viewer know, and the viewer doesn't know that right now. Um, Got it. And there's nothing. There's no features right now in the viewer to to for it to have it know. Um, so that would be a custom release, which would be the other reason why you might want to to build from source. If you're not doing anything like that, then you don't need to go for source uh, for the viewer. Um, so, let's see, uh, where did you get that? So there's actually custom code in the README for the reverse proxy for Windows, and there's even there should be something for Linux too. But we're in when we're in IIS, so what we'll do as IIS does? Just a little directive, basically have. Uh, a regex that catches, uh, has a catcher group for API slash, you know, this, uh, you might want to restrict this. If you, if you are, if you, if your server has like an, an API, uh, API sub URLs, you would probably want to restrict this to just, to just, just, just the two endpoints that are, that are of concern, like, which would be, um, assemble and preview, like API slash assemble and preview. But right now there's no other, uh, there's no other API sub URLs, so this should be fine. It's not going to interfere with anything. But this catcher group will send all those requests to to the local host port three thousand, and then uh, whatever whatever that catcher group is, which was represented here. Then we have to go to, to Internet Manager and restart since we just changed the configuration. And then. So it checks the logs. So uh, now it should go to resend, and it should work. Come on, 
best friend. So the first the first build always takes the longest. Um, this is a known bug, uh, but it, it well should work. <laughs> But the first build always does take the longest. So we did get a 200, we did assemble in a preview. So let's see if we actually got a document. Uh, so we have a document here. Where's the document? All right, PDF template, PDF. Only the, right. tech, only the text templates have document preview. And right. I think that demo is just a PDF. Yeah. But it right. did assemble it correctly in that other one you were just showing. That is the yeah. document that's supposed to be there. Right. Yep. Um, so we can just close that. Um, right. So. Uh, to make the PM2 persist, like when you restart, PM2 will, won't know where, it doesn't save its configuration, you have to actually explicitly save it. So when you restart, it will come up again. Um, it, will, it will basically just restart this entire cluster with all these processes. Uh, the uh, last part, which we might not have time for, um, for Windows, uh, well, you actually need to, to tell, uh, tell your restart process to start PM2 also. Um, to do that, you might, running a little low on time, might be able to do it. Uh, Windows service. For Windows, you would install the PM2 Windows service. So install it here. Install that from NPM. And then install Yeah. So you basically go through all the variables. It's just configuring right. Okay. Uh, and that's and so that should be basically uh, it on, on Linux. You always have to do like a cron tab or or in a tab or something like that. Um, so that's how you install uh, the view and the dat. Um, also, a few security considerations you need to be mindful of securing data and transit and rest. 
Uh, the demo doesn't really secure any data except for using HTTPS, uh, but we didn't really store any data. Um, our, that demo code really just views it. So that's really another a thing for another time. AJ at org does secure the entire site with HTTPS using less script certificates and Chris data files and stores everything on encrypted volumes. Uh, and users can download their encrypted, can also download their data in encrypted format from AJ.org. or they can also download an unencrypted format if they, uh, if they go through settings, uh, but by default it's encrypted. Um, so in summary, everything, you have four components, author, viewer, data, and analytics. Uh, you have three hosting options, LHI, self-host, and AJ.org. Uh, two using free options if you're nonprofit and legal aid, gender just entering documents, LHI and AJ.org. Uh, IHA is for US nonprofits and legal aids. AJ.org is for all nonprofits and legal aids. And you would self host if you need more than docs and need more control to have system encoding capability. Uh, these slides, I'll post these slides up here. Um, my email is Tobias at Cali.org. And uh, do you have any questions? Thanks, Tobias. That was great. So there was a question that came in about user management handled via custom code. Yeah, actually unmute. What's the question? The question just says user management handled via custom code, question mark. So is, I, user, is user management, like our user management on a to j.org? I, I mean, yeah, that, that's all a custom site. So, yeah. Um, right, a to j author self-hosting doesn't do any user management. That's that's up to you to create it, to have accounts, profiles, and, and things like that, you know, within your web space. Um, yeah. And then provide access to A to J author, which is would be one of the services. Yeah, and that custom code could be anything. It could be like maybe you're using maybe you're using your you're using the viewer um, in like as a, like a WordPress plugin or like some Drupal plugin or something. So the Drupal or WordPress would be handling user management or or for AJ at org, we use Laravel and that does user management. Um, but yeah, like if it's just, if it's just these two components, the viewer and the dat, and that's all custom code. It, like you're not, you're not handling, that doesn't handle users there. They said, got it. Well, thank you, Tobias. I'm not seeing any other questions. So thank you for presenting. And since you didn't have a lot of time for that security one, maybe I can loop you into another uh, webinar in the future on security. So thank you all for attending. Thank you, Tobias and John. And we will see you all next month in October. Happy September. All right. Thanks, Thanks take care. Thank you.